everybody, welcome back to another episode of Title Tuesdays. Today, we're talking about title. We had a couple of issues that happened last week that we wanted to produce a video to talk about just to educate you a little bit about some of the things, either if you're a realtor, you're an investor, it doesn't really matter. If you're drafting a real estate contract, there are certain things you need to know when it comes time to closing. So today we're talking about divorce. Divorce is a very common thing that happens, but what I want you to do is I want you to click the like button, give us a thumbs up, give us a comment about some of the videos you'd like to see, and most importantly, subscribe to our channel. If you don't subscribe to our channel, we cannot build our audience and make sure that these videos are getting watched by everybody. So the common theme in a lot of real estate closings is where one party may have purchased a property prior to getting married. So we had a lady that came in and something just didn't match. Her, her name didn't match. When she came in with her photo ID, her photo ID had a different name than that was entitled. And when we spoke to her, because we do what's called the buyer's interview and a seller's interview, uh, as soon as we get a contract, this way we can ask some common questions to help us facilitate the closing. So one of the questions we asked her was your marital status, and she told us she was single and never told us there was a difference in name because she bought the property many years ago. Fast forward, we're sitting at the closing table and her photo ID didn't match. And second, she came in with a gentleman. The gentleman happened to be her husband. So we asked her some questions. She got married. The property was her homestead. So if you're dealing with people that are living in their property, there's what's called the homestead right, which means that the spouse needs to join on to title in order to waive their homestead right. So if they're getting a mortgage, and they're buying a property, even if they're not the borrower. When you talk about the mortgage, this is not who is obligated to pay back the money. This is just simply could be a non-borrowing spouse or a non-borrowing other person, a family member, that is just joining on the mortgage to make sure it is a valid mortgage secured against a homesteaded property, meaning that the, the buyer is going to live in the property and claim that as their homestead. So in this case, it was our homestead. So we said, okay, so your, your husband needs to sign because you're now married and this is your homesteaded property. So we need to make sure your husband signs. So after further looking at her ID, we realized that her name now was not her new husband's name. This was actually her ex-husband's name. So the, the, this lady was married twice since the time she was uh, an owner of this property. So we said, well, we need something to show that your husband, now ex-husband, the, the first husband, did not have anything to do with this property. So you need to be a little bit more educated on this to ask the right questions when you're dealing with a seller or dealing with a buyer. Hey, seller, what is your marital status? Hey, seller, have you been divorced at all throughout the process of owning this house? Because that's going to save some time later. So she left the office, she went home. Fast forward, a couple hours later, she showed back up with her divorce papers that did confirm that her, her ex-husband did not have any rights to the property. But wait, there's more. Not only did she have one ex-husband, she had two ex-husbands. One happened to be in prison, so it was hard to get a hold of. But in this case, we were able to confirm in the divorce papers, because they were done properly, that the spouses did not have any rights to the property. So we were able to move forward with closing by having the new husband sign off on any rights that he may have to the homesteaded property. And we were able to get the deal closed for everyone. But proper, being prepared properly before would have caused these problems to not have come up at closing when the photo ID didn't match and things like that. You know, because our job is to make sure that the right people are coming to closing that, you know, and this was a, a very good deal. There was nothing wrong with it. It just took a little bit of research to get down to it. So if you're a client and you've been married and you've been divorced, you need to see how this relates to your property. Just because your attorney drafted what's called the marital settlement agreement does not mean that your spouse automatically signs off the property because there are a lot of times where we see that the property may go to the husband or the wife and it only goes to them at which point the property gets sold because the other party maybe gets a, a payment. So they could own a house with some equity in it and says, you know what? to the other spouse, I'll give you this property. And at which point you sell or refinance, you have to pay me X. So a marital settlement agreement does not automatically give title back to the one spouse. Usually there is some type of deed that would be signed. And make sure if you're signing these deeds, the, deeds would, the deed would have verbiage on it that says something pursuant to the final divorce 
or the marital settlement agreement because that would confirm from a title examination perspective that the other party signed off of the property due to the divorce. You know, because we see a lot of problems where people try and do this stuff themselves and then when they go to sell five, ten years later, they're now having a problem. So I thank you as always for watching these episodes of Title Tuesdays. I hope you learned something new about divorce and real estate and when they come together for a successful closing. Don't forget to subscribe below. We look forward to seeing you on next week's episode and we'll see you at the closing table.